Hello friends. It's Wednesday, April 29th. A fact I only know because I just checked. It's good to see you. I hope you are all doing well or well enough sheltering in the places you presently are. Uh, during a time like this, uh, it's there's so many different sort of biblical resources for us to draw on, to take comfort from, to be challenged by, to be instructed by. And that's always true of scripture. It's one of the extraordinary things about it is that we can go to it and um, find something that speaks to us at nearly every moment of life. Uh, in this uh, very difficult time where there is so much uncertainty, um, the God who has not promised certainty, but presence and kindness and love and generosity to us um, is a profound comfort. I'm going to read from Robert Alter's Book of Psalms today. Robert Alter is a Jewish scholar who has done a remarkable translation of the Old Testament, uh, really gifted um, at understanding and seeing the not only the wordplay, but the um, really extraordinarily fine craft of so many of the writers of the Old Testament and bringing that to our ears in a new way. I'm going to read from Psalm 23, perhaps, well, easily the most well-known psalm um, of our culture. And I'm going to do that because uh, normally if we were in church on Sunday and we're using the full uh, list of, of scripture readings, we would be reading Psalm 23 this week. I used it not too long ago in worship, um, and so we won't actually hear it on Sunday. But I thought I would bring it to you today as we pause together. Psalm 23 and its rhythms are so well known to so many of us. Um, but I thought I'd let you hear it with a different voice this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In grass meadows he makes me lie down, by quiet waters guides me. My life he brings back. He leads me on pathways of justice for his name's sake. Though I walk in the veil of death's shadow, I fear no harm, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, it is they that console me. You set out a table before me in the face of my foes. You moisten my head with oil, my cup overflows. Let but goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for many long days. Such an extraordinary poem brought to us with new words. The Lord is my shepherd. Christ Jesus as the good shepherd, I shall not want in grass meadows. He makes me lie down by quiet waters. He guides me. This imagery of the Lord as a shepherd was very common um, in ancient literature. Um, and shepherd was really also a stand-in for king, that the shepherd was the shepherd of the people. And so you see in scripture that kings are often referred to as shepherds. But part of what's beautiful about this psalm is that the metaphor is pushed through the first several verses. He makes me lie down. That's actually a Hebrew word for uh, the lying down of, of animals and uh, the training that happens there. He guides me by side, uh, quiet waters, waters that are uh, okay to to drink. Um, he, he takes me out to, to grass meadows. Um, and even when I walk through the valley, or here the veil of death's shadow, uh, the place of danger for the animal, uh, there is no fear. You are with me, your rod and your staff. 
uh, really pushes through um, these this wonderful imagery and then suddenly right there in verse 5 it changes from uh, the shepherd and the sheep to this um, wider understanding it's no longer just the metaphor of the shepherd and the sheep but you set a table before me you moisten my head with oil my cup overflows and this is an image of God's provision of abundance which is actually what we will end up talking about on Sunday, because when Jesus um, is the good shepherd, and John talks about Jesus as a shepherd several times, and, and we'll actually be in chapter 10, but part of what he says is, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May not be a callback to Psalm 23, uh, but it certainly feels like it. Your rod and your staff, they console me. You set this table before me, even in the presence of my enemies, in the face of my foes, even in the midst of social isolation, even in the midst of fear of the coronavirus, you set a table for me. The psalm really has powerful imagery, not just for the God of the Old Testament, of course, it's the triune God, but for the God we know in Jesus Christ, the good shepherd who sets a table, sets a table for us where our cup overflows, where we are nourished with heavenly food. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Those are the words of the King, jo uh, the King James that are intoned, perhaps, in our mind whenever we hear this. But like goodness and kindness pursue me. Pursue, it reminds me of Psalm 137, where we are pursued by God to the ends of the earth, not for punitive measures, but because God so loves us. Go back to John. For God so loves us that he gave us his only son, that we might not be separate, but that we might be in relationship. Indeed, that we might dwell in the house of the Lord for many long days. I invite you to spend some time with the Psalms in whatever version you have them. Uh, they really are the full gamut of human experience, and they're good traveling companions for such a time as this. I'll see you on Sunday.